Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome back to my class Teknologi pengendalian hama Or in English, uh, we call it Technologies of Pest Management So, after we study about the human and insect relationship uh, From the previous lectures We already know that uh, insect have many roles in our life yeah? There, there are some uh, beneficial insect and there are uh, some of pest insect that harm to the environment. From these pictures, I have a picture here. Can you guess uh, what is the order of this insect? Okay, the order is uh, belong to Coleoptera. In, yeah, Coleoptera insect, yeah, Coleoptera. Coleo is heart and in, uh, Ptera is wings so Coleoptera is uh, the insect that is have heart wings yeah the forewing of this insect is called elytra yeah in in the ecosystem this insect uh, the family is coccinellidae or we call it ladybug uh, this is uh, the ladybug and in the ecosystem there are two roles uh, the first one as a predator and the second one is uh, the pest how come in one uh, in one uh, family uh, this coccinelle have a two different uh, have a two different uh, roles in the ecosystem predator and pest <laughs> How how is the differences between coccinellidae, uh, predatory coccinellidae, and uh, pred uh, coccinellidae, which is uh, pest? The difference is uh, in in the morphology of their body. The predatory insect, coccinellidae predator, uh, we can see uh, in this uh, in their elytra. The elytra is shiny. Yeah, shiny. And and in pass the elytra is dull. Yeah, so that is different. Satunya uh, mengkilat ya. Yeah. Satu kalau yang bahama itu kusam atau dull. Okay. Uh, this is so in this picture. This is a, a coxin a predatory coccinelli. They eat aphid. Aphid is kutu daun. The order is Hemiptera. Family is Aphididae. The Aphididae insect, uh, the aphid, uh, excrete the honeydew. Yeah, excrete the honeydew. Honeydew itu adalah embun madu ya. And uh, they have association with with ant. Yeah. Also, uh, this ant can protect uh, the the ant colonies. And and in the honeydew also can uh, be uh, substrate to mold, yeah, mold, yeah. That that is uh, embun jelaga, yeah, embun jelaga. Mold is a disease on plant, so there there are some association uh, of aphid to ant and to uh, disease. Mold this is Bunjilaga. Okay, this is how uh, this uh, pictures describe. Okay, now we move to the next slide. In this session, we will study about integrated pest management in Indonesia. Uh, this is called pengendalian hama terpadu. So we have a general meaning of the term integrated pest management. And we will know about the primary uh, features, about the principle of uh, integrated pest management. So, what is the, what is uh, what are the principle of uh, integrated pest management? We will study uh, in the next slide. And after this session, we will realize that integrated pest management is not a blueprint or textbook answer. So I mean, in this case, integrated pest management is a, is a 
controlling fast that can that we can minute. Yeah. What are the components that uh, we can use on the pest management itself? And also, we can combine many techniques uh, to control the pest. We can uh, use cultural control. And we can use biological control. We can use a physical and mechanical control. And the last option, and we use chemical control. So we can combine many uh, many control to controlling the pest. From the term itself, integrated pest management integrated integrated is composed of separate parts united together to form a more complete and compatible unit. So as I say, we can combine many controls to controlling the pest. So we, we, we cannot rely on only one or two uh, component to controlling the pest. We can have uh, several uh, techniques yeah, to controlling the pest. And then the pest itself, an organism that reduces the available and the quality of, uh, of the crops. I, in this uh, case, uh, the pest is not only the insect but also include the disease and also include okay the weeds yeah so the pest not only the insect or other vertebrate also disease and also the weeds and management how we manage all of the component so our uh, our main uh, our pest management would be success so this is a thinking assignment what are the farmer field facts regarding pesticide and pest management is that uh, farmers use offer use pesticide or misuse Pesticide and what is the impact of uh, using pesticide? As we know that if we uh, use uh, synthetic pesticide, so there are a lot of impact, not only uh, to the environment but also to the to the farmer itself. There is an impact. So, things. What? What? Yeah. What are the reasons? And what are the field facts? Okay, in this slide, field fact: uh, farmers tend to uh, spray pesticide ambiguously. They use knockdown pests over ambiguously. They use uh, synthetic pesticide, over use, misuse, even abuse pesticide. In when a growing season, maybe uh, there are seven seven times uh, the farmers uh, spraying the uh, synthetic pesticide in their field is too many. They uh, most of the farmers rely on the synthetic uh, synthetic pesticide. Yeah, they uh, they didn't use any. Uh, any component to control the pest. They depend on the use of synthetic pesticide. And what is the impact of uh, using pesticide, uh, synthetic pesticide? Excessive. Yeah. What is the impact of uh, the using of excessive pesticide? They lead to insect insecticide resistance, so the pest would be resist to the insect in synthetic pesticide itself. And then uh, the impact also resurgence. Yeah. Resurgence is how the pest is increasing after the use of synthetic pesticide. 
so oh, we call it resurgence uh, in uh, in the next slide we will see the graph uh, there is a uh, economic threshold economic threshold is a threshold that uh, we can use synthetic pesticide in a resurgence if we use uh, synthetic pesticide so the the population would be decreased and after that the population of the pest itself will increase uh, in, uh, will increase over okay and uh, the control failure yeah because of the resistance and resurgence and the impact also in the environmental and ecological imbalance the natural enemies would be there also from the use of excessive uh, synthetic pesticide and the cost also will increase because uh, the synthetic pesticide uh, the 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 price is quite high so it will increase the pest management cost so we cannot rely on only only on a synthetic pesticide we should use many techniques to control the pest okay okay let's move to the next slide so this is the impact uh the problems that can be happen if we use uh, over if we use uh, excessive synthetic pesticide the first one is pest resistance the so pest resistance if you if you spray uh, over to the pest so the pest uh, have uh, their their uh, internal resistance and if you in the next in the next period if you spray uh, the same pesticide uh, the the pest would not be dying this is how pest resistance happens and then the pest resurgence resurgence uh, I already told to you before and the secondary pest there is a major pest and the, there is a minor pest in in the case of secondary pest is how minor pass uh, change into the major pass and the, the pro, uh, another problem of uh, using synthetic pesticide is environmental pollution ecological imbalance and another and another impact is occupational health risk of pesticide for workers this is especially for the farmers who applying the pesticide yeah okay and then and then the residue on harvest material if we use a synthetic pesticide there is always a residue on our crops maybe on the fruit uh, that uh, we produce on or uh, in a paddy or in a vegetable that uh, the farmer produce uh, there is always residue okay uh, after this slide we will uh, describe one by one how pest resistance happens how pest resurgence happens secondary pests and uh, other component happen okay, the first one we will talk about the pest resistance okay. pest resistance describe the decreased susceptibility of pest population uh, in Indonesia ya yeah, uh, ini adalah penurunan decrease susceptibility of a pest population penurunan populasi hama to a pesticide that was previously effective at controlling the pest penurunan kerentanan hama terhadap pesticide tertentu yang sebelumnya efektif menjadi tidak efektif ya yeah. So as uh, we can see in the diagram, uh, in in these pictures, the red one is a pest that is uh, high resistance, yeah. And the white one is uh, susceptible. Susceptible itu yang rentan, ya. After insecticide application, the susceptible pest would be die. And uh 
okay and uh, and the the red one is still alive the uh, the red one is a uh, is a uh, the generation that uh, have uh, high resistance okay and then what will happen with the later generation as we know that uh, the insect will produce uh, their offspring offspring itu adalah anakan ya they reproduce ya into another insects ya they have their offspring mereka mempunyai anakan and what will happen the the resistant ones will be more and more in the in the in the later generation so in the later generation the past which is resistance will dominate the field yeah so if we spray uh, in the same insecticide uh, in the next uh, in the next uh, maybe in the next growing season the the insect will would, would not be die because uh, they uh, they have a strong a more stronger colonies than uh, than the susceptible one okay uh, this is the same pictures the first uh, the susceptible the susceptible uh, is the white one and the resistant is the black one after the insecticide application the uh, most of the susceptible one uh, is die and the leftover is uh, the resistant one and they will breed uh, there is uh, the insect breeding because uh, they they have their own reproduction they produce offspring mereka menghasilkan anak-anakan and then uh, in the next in the next generation the pest uh, which is resistance breed more and more and then in the end of the growing season the pest which is which is a resistant is dominant in the ecosystem this is how pest resistance happen i hope you understand what i mean I try to explain it uh, to you slowly. Okay, and then uh, this is a secondary pass. Okay, secondary pass. As we can see in the graph, this is N. N is the okay. The N is amount of pass, and T is time. So in this case, this is uh, this line is economic threshold uh, the strike one is economic threshold what is economic threshold economic threshold is op operational reference to determine when chemical control to be applied so this is the threshold uh, that a chemical uh, can be applied yeah. for example this is pass a pass a this is a major or the uh, Meyer pass. Uh, the population is still below the economic threshold, uh, the green one, and some uh, someday the population is over the economic threshold. So there is the application, insecticide application. What will happen to the pass A after the insecticide application? The population of pass A, which is Meyer pass, is decrease and what will happen with another pass yeah as uh, we see in this graph there is a pass b the population of pass b uh, previously before the insecticide application the population is uh, below uh, economic threshold is uh, the the cap is really uh, high this is uh, there is a low population of pass b and what will happen with pass b after the insect population 
after the insecticide application, the pest B uh, is uh, increased greatly uh, over the economic threshold. So in uh, in the end, the pest B uh, is over in uh, in the habitat. Uh, this is how secondary pest. Uh, we can see also in these pictures. This is pest A, and uh, this is the natural enemies of uh, pest A and the yellow one, the triangle is pest B, and uh, the white triangle is the natural uh, the natural enemies of pest B. What will happen before the insecticide application? The uh, there is a balanced ecosystem in here, and what will happen uh, after uh, this is uh, there to pest yeah pest A and pest B. What will happen if uh, there is an insecticide application? After insecticide application, pest, uh, pest A, uh, pest A, uh, which is major pest, will decrease greatly. And what will happen with pest B? Pest B is still survive. Also, with the natural enemies, also uh, decrease, uh, but the pest B still dominate. What will happen? Uh, in uh, in the next uh, in the next growing season or in the next uh, sprayer, there is an outbreak of pest B, the triangle, because uh, they also reproduce, and uh, they produce offspring. In the end, the pest B uh, will dominate uh, the ecosystem. So there is a change from uh, the domination is the change. In the previous, pest E dominated the ecosystem, and now pest B is dominated the ecosystem. So this is how the secondary pest happen. Okay, yeah. secondary pest outbreak uh, occur when the use of pesticide reduces densities of an unwanted target pest, pest E. Uh, success as uh, pest e species trigger subsequent outbreak of pest species pest B. Okay. I hope you also understand in this uh, case, the secondary pest. Now we move to the pest resurgence. What is the pest resurgence? Pest resurgence is the rapid reappearance of pest population after the uh, insecticide application. It's because of the use of broad spectrum pesticide. Jadi uh, rapid reappearance, jadi uh, kemunculan kemunculan uh, hama yang sangat cepat ya dalam jumlah yang sangat uh, banyak. From the grab n is amount and t is time. The population of uh, of the past the green one is below the economic threshold, and someday uh, there is uh, the population of uh, of uh, of this pest is over the economic threshold, so there is an insecticide application. What will happen after the insecticide application? The population will decrease. But what will happen after this? After this, the population is over increase, uh, increasingly over. Yeah, as uh, yeah, as you can see in the slide. Uh, this is uh, how uh, pest resurgence happen before insecticide application. There is a balance uh, in 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 a colony of pest and natural enemies. There is a balance, and what will happen after the use of insecticide a synthetic? So the 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 black one, uh, the black one. Uh, is decreased but still survive. But the natural enemies, uh, they die. Yeah, the the white one, uh, and the the white one, uh, the leftover is one. See here, what will happen? There is an outbreak of of uh, this pest. They over, they uh, they they over, yeah. 
the population is over because uh, they they lost their natural enemies. So this is past research can happen. Okay, and then we study about the residues in food. There is a contaminant in food. If we use uh, over pesticide, if we use excessive pesticide, there is always residue in the crops that we produce. In this case, we have a standard. Uh, it's it's about MRL, maximum residual limits or maximum residual level. This limit or this uh, MRL. Uh, often used when we export our commodities into another countries or if we sell our uh, crops into the retail so we have to comply with the standard that uh, given by uh, their uh, their country or or by by the retail itself so we have complied yeah? Kita harus mengikuti standar mereka jika kita ingin menjual ke sana. So MRL ya, yeah, pesticide residue on crops monitor through the use of maximum residual limits, okay. which are based on the analysis of the quantity of a given chemical remaining of the food product sample. Uh, it means that if we use pesticide so there is a residue in the crops the the residue itself uh, can be analyzed using mrl this is the standard so uh, if we want to sell to another other country or we sell to retail the mrl should be below uh, the standard a maximum residue limit uh, is a maximum concentration of a pesticide residue uh, expressed as a milligram per kilogram to be legally permitted in or in food commodities, commodities and uh, animal feeds. So, so this is the important. Uh, we should uh, pay attention may, uh, to, to the MRL. So the MRL is usually determined by repeated uh, of the order of 10 field trials where the crop has been treated according to the good agricultural practices. So in, in the good agricultural, good agricultural practices or GAP, there is a standard that should be followed by uh, the farmers, they uh, there are a lot of standards in gap. For example, how is uh, the use of uh, good far uh, for good variety? How is the use of uh, seed? How is the uh, how is the fertilizer? How is the use of uh, control technique? Is that use chemical pesticide and and etc. There are a lot of standards that should be complied by the farmers. So, the the crops that are produced by uh, the farmers will uh, below the standard of MRL will below the standard. Okay, <clears throat> harus di bawah standar ya, uh, harus di bawah batas ya. Should be below the limits. Sorry ya. Yes. Follow the adoption of gap at the farmer at the farm level must be uh, must be priority. Okay, yeah. so <clears throat> the MRL should be below the limits if we uh, want to sell our product into another country or uh, in a retail. So, so that is the point, and this is how we uh, analyze MRL. So we do sampling in the field. Uh, we should pick some of crops that uh, would be analyzed in the laboratory. The sampling, for example, we use egg sampling. 
so we will pick some uh, of the crops in the some area or uh, and shape or uh, we uh, okay x or n commonly used sampling and uh, the sample preparation yeah they are uh, uh, they are amount that uh, should be prepared by the farmers to analyze this MRL for 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 example uh, there are uh, yeah. for example this uh, size yeah the size is uh, below 25 grams for example peas olive so minimum size uh, for the laboratory some sample is one kilo so we should prepare minimal one kilo of uh, berries for example for peas so we can analyze the MRL. Uh, this is different with if we want to analyze MRL in apples and oranges. Okay, yeah, at least our uh, one kilo or at least ten units. And uh, the very big size, for example, watermelon and melon, more than two kilos. At least we should bring two units of uh, crops, uh, two units of watermelon, for example. So there is a minimal samples that we should bring from the field, yeah. From the sampling, uh, we put some uh, fruit or some vegetables or paddy or 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 anything that we plant. Okay, and then we do sample testing in the laboratory, and after uh, the sample testing is finished. So we, we will get the confirmation of result identification. Is our uh, is that our sam uh, sample the MRL is uh, hi higher than the limits or below the limit? If below the limit, uh, it should be good uh, because the residue is low. But if uh, the residue is highest than the limits, so it means that uh, the, the the vegetable or the fruit is not good yeah and, and it will not comply with uh, other country yeah standard yeah okay so uh, you already know about the minimum size of laboratory samples. Okay, and then we will talk about the uh, these pictures. This is about the occupational health for farmers. Uh, also, occupational health risk for farmers. Jadi resiko keselamatan kerja uh, bagi petani, ya. Yeah. They are spraying pesticide. Do you think that uh, all of these farmers in these pictures uh, spray the pesticide in a good way? Do they use proper clothing? Do they use uh, the right uh, clothing? Okay. <laughs> if, if if we didn't use the right proper clothing, so we build, uh, so we can exposed by the pesticide synthetic okay this is the field fact that we get from the field and this is the occupational health occupational health deal with all aspects of health and safety in the workplace and has a strong focus on prevention of hazard so this is uh, related to the health and safety what we use what should we wear uh, if we use with the pesticide if we use with a synthetic pesticide yeah. how to prevent from the exposure of the synthetic pesticide itself 
start from handling concentrate how to mixing ya yeah, and measuring how uh, how to deal with the uh, dosage and concentration ya yeah, uh, we should make a pay attention of that this is how a uh, minimum for handling liquid concentrate uh, the farmer should uh, use long trousers rubber boots yeah, rubber boots and and also the the gloves preferably made from nitrile rubber which is more resistant to chemical uh, at least they use eye protection and they use a long sleeve shirt this is the ideal uh, outwear that uh, the that uh, farmer should be used yeah. but that outfit not always the most practical yeah. this outfit it should be used uh, when we apply uh, to controlling the storage pass in uh, for example in the storage storage pass I mean hama gudang ya hama gudang seperti bulog ya storage pass for example rice we fill rice we fill is a rice uh, is a pass uh, that attack the rice in a storage okay so uh, we should uh, we should wear a full protection from head to toe also with the respirator this respirator with the special filters because if we uh, work with the uh, storage pass also we deal with the with the gas yes, uh, which is uh, dangerous for the respiratory of the applica of, of the insecticide applicator so we use the full protection to control the storage pass in a storage ya yeah, di tempat penyimpanan <coughs> this is the ideal situ situation what uh, should the farmers or, or the uh, or the uh, farmers wear ya yeah? but not always the most practical we live in the tropical country the tropical country the weather is really hot how if the farmers use the full protection in uh, in the field they will burn because of a field hot so what at least the farmers should wear at least the farmers should wear the hat and uh, should wear the mask should wear a long sleeve rubber glove trouser and rubber boot this is the min minimal uh, outfit uh, or outwear that uh, should be used by the farmers okay so it will minimize the exposure of the synthetic pesticide as we know that synthetic pesticide is really dangerous to the, to the human health also yeah. okay. if we expose to the synthetic pesticide continuously so it will uh, lead into the cancer and another disease so it, it's really dangerous so we, we should make sure that our outfield uh, our outfit or our uh, or our outwear will minimize into the exposure of insect insecticide and we back to the in integrated pest management so in integrated pest management we use many combination of uh, technique to controlling the pest the aim is uh, to reduce the cost and uh, we should uh, make sure that the control that we use is at for environmentally friendly and social acceptable yeah uh, 
in in the credit pass management we uh, not only manage the population of insect or pests but also we we can control the disease weeds and other pests in agriculture so this is integrated pest management is how to manage all of the control technique so the our uh, our our so the the controlling pest would be success by using cultural physical mechanical biological and the last is chemical control yeah this is the IPM uh, what we should do to controlling the past okay. Let, uh, uh, this is the order of IPM measures uh, the order is um, we make sure we control the past by the cultural measures itu pengendalian secara teknik budidaya yeah. how to make sure our plant is held by using proper uh, tillage eh, pengolahan tanah yang baik and then how to use uh, proper sp uh, spacing uh, planting spacing yeah. jarak tanam the variety that we use how to use a proper fertilizer how to use proper drainage and other so many uh, factors uh, that can uh, make uh, this cultural technique control also for example we can use the the resistant variety so it will uh, reduce the risk of uh, pest resistance and we can use physical and mechanical control for example we can use the seed treatment uh, for physical uh, control seed treatment with uh, heat or cold treatment and then we uh, some of pests uh, can be controlled by sound wave dari gelombang ya and we can use uh, mulch mulch is uh, mulsa ya mulsa and other control and mechanical control for example we can use the netting uh, or crop isolation and we can use wrapping of fruit for example if we uh, if we have a guava uh, in our home we can wrap with the plastic why we should wrap with the plastic we can prevent the fruit fly yeah fruit fly uh, so so that is one of the example uh, some of the example how to control with mechan uh, physical and mechanical technique and then uh, collecting of egg uh, of pests yeah some of the pests the egg is clump yeah uh, telurnya itu be beberapa itu beberapa spesies itu mengelompok ya yeah? the egg is clump so we can destroy the egg yeah so we can uh, decrease the population uh, before they hatch into the larvae another control is using biological using predator and using a uh, parasitoid yeah, yeah predator uh, the insect that uh, hunt that prey other animal uh, and parasitoid they live inside or in uh, uh, in other and uh, in other insect we, we will study later in the next meeting okay and uh, they are entomopathogenic yeah entomopathogenic entomopathogenic is entomo entomo is insect and pathogenic is uh, is a 
disease carrier. So entomopathogenic, uh, it means that uh, the insect could be ill by uh, by some virus, bacteria, bacteria, fungi, and uh, nematode. Okay, so we can control the pest by using the entomopathogenic. And the last order of IP emitter is chemical control. So we can use uh, chemical control, yeah, only if the population uh, is uh, excess the economic threshold. So we can use the chemical control. Chemical control is the last option. Uh, we can use ke or chemical control if the population is excess uh, the economic threshold or uh, if the cultural, physical, biological is not enough. So we can use uh, the chemical control. And, and uh, these, uh, these uh, IPM measures supported by monitoring. Yeah, monitoring is we can observe weekly yeah day by day we we should observe our field this is the holistic approach and the principle of integrated pest management pest control uh, uses the holistic approach should be uh, favorable yeah for economic we can uh, reduce the the post production and uh, ecologically, ecologically, yeah, environmental friendly. Yeah, we, we not only care about the past itself, but also we uh, care about the natural enemies. We care about the soil, the water. Yeah, this is the environmental friendly. And uh, pest control that we use should be fair. It means socially acceptable and human. Some of the control is, uh, is not socially acceptable. For example, the using of uh, entomopathogenic nematode. Nematode is, uh, nematode is uh, like a worm. So we actually, we can control the pest. We can control the insect using the nematode. Uh, okay, uh, we can make uh, the insect ill because of this nematode, but the, in in reality, it's not socially acceptable. Yeah. And the fourth one is easily adapted to the local needs. Uh, the okay. Yeah. For example, if uh, if uh, we we have a two uh, two different country or we have two different region. For example, the pest control in uh, region A is successful with the uh, with the uh, implementation of integrated pest management. But if we if we uh, do the same uh, pest management in uh, in uh, region B, the the result is not only uh, not always the same. Yeah. It's it's because the the environment is different. Also the uh, the problem is, is also different. So it's mean that in in integrated pest management should be uh, adapted to the local needs. Yeah. Uh, the successfully of implementation integrated pest management in one area is not always the same in other area. Yeah. Mm, should be adapted to the local need, and this and this is the fourth of principle of integrated pest management. So we should uh, grow a healthy crops from the seed that we use, from the space uh, planting spacing, from the drainage, from the fertilizer, and other. Yeah, and we use uh, we optimize the use of natural enemies. As you know, uh, we have a predator, we have parasitoid, we have entomopathogenic that I already 
uh, explained before and the third one is a uh, we observe fields weekly yeah? or uh, monitoring or the term is surveillance is the same and the fourth one is farmer as as expert in the end in the field the the decision that uh, takes by the farmers is depend by the farmers it, itself so the farmer should be expert in controlling the pest it means the farmers need uh, many training yeah? uh, and um, so the farmers uh, need more knowledge about uh, how how to implement the integrated pest management yeah? <tuh> ya jadi petani itu se uh, sebagai ahli ya jadi petani itu harus knowledgeable harus banyak pengetahuan oleh karena itu uh, perlu banyak training ya uh, harus ada banyak penyuluhan ya, dan lain sebagainya and then we we talk about the necessary understanding of integrated pest management before we can controlling the pest itself we should know the identification of uh, the pest yeah we should know the bioecology of pests and diseases that we will deal with we we should know uh, for example if we deal with the insect we should know the order and then uh, the family and then bioecology we should know the habitat we should know the life cycle so we can uh, prepare Uh, and we can uh, manage and, and so we, we can think okay sorry I think uh, my slide is pause I don't know <laughs> which one of slide is pause but I want to repeat this slide uh, I might uh, miss this slide necessary understanding of integrated pest management so we should uh, before we can control the pest we should uh, know the biology bioecology of pests and disease the identification is crucial so if we uh, deal with the insect so we should know the order family how is the symptoms of attack in plant we should know the moth part and another and also we uh, should know the weather forecasting and plan according to the threshold so we can prevent uh, the the outbreak the past outbreak ya yeah, mencegah ledakan hama and then uh, economic threshold measures now uh, we should uh, know about this economic threshold as i told you before and then emphasizing the ways of farming and pest management based on ipm concept how uh, to to practice uh, our farm yeah, in a in a good way so how to make uh, how to make sure our plant is held by uh, the using of seed uh, good seedling and how to use uh, good fertilizer proper fertilizer and how is the water and uh, how is the synthetic pesticide used and other okay. <clears throat> so this uh, this is the good uh, the the important point emphasizing the ways of farming if our plan is in uh, is uh, in a in a good condition so it will prevent uh, the the pest to come And then the last one is pesticide as the last alternative. Yeah, how agriculture IPM work? Record keeping is the must. So we 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 evaluate uh, in week by week, day by day, what what happened in in the field, and we can we can make uh, analysis about the problems, and we can prepare how to control that problems in the field uh, inspection and monitoring then 
uh, all of these uh, things should be uh, concerned to implement integrated pest management. So uh, our 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 pest management should be uh, complete and successful. And this is the objective of integrated pest management. We prevent uh, crop losses. We don't want to uh, crop failure. We don't want to uh, do the crop failure. Yeah? And then we promote the ecologically sound crop management practice. We not only care about the pest itself, but also we care about the soil. We care about the water. We uh, we care about the natural enemies in the field and other component in the environment. We prevent the loss biodiversity. If we use uh, excessive pesticide, not only pest itself will be die, but also the natural enemies will be died too. So uh, we have to concern about that. Prevention of occupational health risk for the farmers. If the farmers use the pesticide uh, excessively, excessively, and they do not wear proper clothing, so they will exposed by the synthetic pesticide, and the risk is in their health. Um, we make sure about food safety. Our food is safe is if they are free from biological contaminant, physical contaminant, and chemical contaminant. If we use uh, minimize, uh, if we use minimal uh, pesticides, so the residue of pesticide in the crops would be low too. So we should care about this. Uh, we should make sure our food is safe. Yeah. And we should make difference between food safety and food security. Food safety is keamanan pangan. Food security is ketahanan pangan. Ketahanan pangan uh, is a measure of the availability of food and individual's ability to access it. Uh, this is how a government do, how to make sure that the food is available for everyone and the the society is easy to access that food. This is a very different between food safety and food security. And the object, another of, of objective is avoiding pest and disease resistance. You already study before about the resistance and drink water quality. Uh, I ever went to the Europe and Japan. Uh, they have a really good. Uh, way in a, in a drink yeah yeah i ever drink uh i ever drink uh, water from the bathroom because uh, they their uh their the water is is in a in a good quality and they make sure yeah uh, and they make sure about it and this is the characteristics of integrated pest management, uh, multidisciplinary approach. So, uh, not only the uh, the pests and diseases, uh, the study of pests and diseases, but we, uh, but in 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 the implementation of integrated pest management, we also need other subjects such as agronomy and horticulture, how to grow our plan yeah, and other subjects. Integration of multiple strategies, we can use several techniques to control the pest, aim, the, aim at the prevention of pests rather than curative, and the uh, complex and uh, system approach, location specific. As I told uh, you before, if, uh, if uh, in, a, in a region A, uh, there is a uh, in the great pest management implementation and its success, it's it would be different in in a uh, in a uh, region B. In region B, would be uh, can be success and uh, can be not. Uh, it's because of the problems is different, the environment is different, it's totally different. 
So the implementation of integrated pest management in Region A and Region B should be different too. Next, local adaptation aims to sustainability or uh, can combine high technology and low technology require group action. This is important because if uh, the implementers the implementation of integrated pest management is doing by only a few farmers, so it will not uh, it it should be uh, not successful. I think it's hard to uh, to implement integrated pest management, but it needs a group action. Yeah, itu butuh kelompok tani berbagai kelompok tani ya untuk bisa sukses. Require intensive training. Yeah, for farmers. Yeah, and uh, this is how the characteristic of integrated pest management. Okay, we should care about many things, yeah, to implement this integrated pest management. So, our field would be success by implementing in the in the in IPM in the right way. Okay, I think it's enough. Uh, the take home assignments like before individual tech uh, work as resume from the lectures and the resume of the video okay see you on uh, zoom and don't forget to make a mini review on youtube thank you wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you see ya